Hello friends, uh, my name is Raza Masood. Today we will discuss about a topic free float. Friend, we will see today this topic with respect to project management or PMB, uh, PMP, PMBOK, project management body of knowledge. Uh, friends, I will try my level best to explain you the concept of free float in a very easy to understand manner so that everyone can understand the concept of free float easily. Uh, friend, I have seen, uh, I don't want to go into nitty gritties and uh, complex calculations. I just want to explain you the concept of free float in a very easy to understand manner If so that if you are a student and studying project management, so you can be, this video can be very helpful for you. I just want to share my knowledge, my thoughts, my experience with you so that it can be helpful for you. Uh, Either you are a student and uh, uh, studying project management in, in a university or you are planning to give exam a PMP so this video can be helpful for helpful for you. Friend this topic uh, free float is very important uh, with respect to uh, exam point of view. Uh, you must see this topic in exam free float at least uh, float at least 10 to 15 question you must see in the exam which are directly related to float, total float or free float. Around 15 to 20, 15 at all, uh, at least 15 question you will definitely see in exam which are directly related to float concepts. Uh, friend, here it is very important to understand that uh, um, you may uh, see uh, the, you, you may see an, uh, a question in exam that your concept related to float or free float will be checked or you may have to calculate the free float in the exam as well. So here this is very necessary to understand that first of all your concept, your understanding about free float should be clear that what is free float. Then next that you must have to able to calculate the free float as well. So you must know the formula that how to calculate the free float as well because you may see in the exam to calculate the free float. <coughs> So two things here, first of all your knowledge, your understanding should be clear and uh, your, you must know the formula and you must have practiced that how you can easily and quickly calculate the free float in the exam if you see uh, a question in the exam. Secondly friend, uh, if you are a professional and working as a project manager in any organization, so this video can be helpful for you because uh, in the project planning, scheduling, networking, uh, so this topic this video can be helpful for you uh, because uh, you must know that how to schedule the activities and how to calculate the free float and you must also know want to you must it is this necessary as a project you must know that what is the advantage of calculation of free float and what knowledge what advantage you will gain if you know the free float on an activity so uh, friends let's start our topic free float uh, friend before uh, going into the deep first of all i would request to please uh, subscribe to my channel and click on the bell option as well <coughs> so that my new videos can reach to you so uh, what is free float friend free float topic is basically related to a uh, critical path see let me try to explain you See friend, as if as a project manager you uh, get a project, you receive the project from uh, your senior management that you have to start a project. So uh, what you will do at the time of starting the project? First of all, you have the knowledge or scope that what is the scope of a project, what you have to deliver. First of all, you have a clear understanding of, of a project. Then you have to build up work breakdown structure or you, you can say a WBS. WBS means friend that you have to decompose the project into smaller activities. Smaller activity means that a level at which you can estimate a task in terms of time or in terms of cost. Uh, friend, for example, uh, let's suppose that you have to build an e-commerce solution for a, for a customer. So if you decompose the project into smaller activities, for example, the very high level, what you will do first of all you have to do the planning then you have to do the development software development and then you have to do the quality assurance then you have to do the user acceptance testing and then in the last you have to do the production deployment so these are the high level activities you which you have to do now at this level you have to 
schedule the activities or you have to build a network diagram at this level what is the purpose of making a network diagram here is that you have you must know that what is the relationship between the activities you must know the dependencies between the activities that which activity will finish then which activity will start for example you must know that once the development will finish only then the quality assurance will start <coughs> so this is the finish to start relationship here activity a will finish then the activity b will start so based on that you will do the you will build a network diagram here so after once you build the network diagram you have to calculate the critical path here what is the critical path friend critical path means that it is the longest duration uh, to complete the project so longest duration means that it is the longest duration consists of on activities and it is uh, it will tell you the longest duration of activities and also very important thing is that uh, that it will have all the activities which exist on the critical path will have a zero float or slack zero float means friend that now uh, now please focus here float means right now we are talking about total float or zero uh, or about simple float Pro total float means friend it tells you that the activity if any activity will delay on the critical path it will delay the project timelines are you getting my point this is the total float please i will repeat again if any activity delay on the critical path it will delay the project timeline so this is called the uh, total float now what is free float here free float is the amount of time that a schedule activity can be delayed without delaying the early uh, early start date of any immediate following schedule activities friend uh, free float simply you just try to focus here free float means that it will tell you the activity that if you delay uh, how much time you can delay an activity that it will not impact or that it will not delay the next activity simple uh, just try i will repeat again free float tells you the time of delay that can be delayed the current activity and it will not delay the next activity okay <laughs> so now free float is the formula is es or early start of next activity minus ef of current activity minus 1 es is early start and ef is the current activity or early finish now here just see the let me give you an uh, example here uh, just see this network diagram if we go at this is activity a b uh, d and this is activity A, C, and D. There are two, three, two paths are available. If we just go from A, B, and D, so the total duration here is 20 days. And if we go from he here like A, C, and D, so the total duration is 12. So friend, A, B, and D, this is the critical path. Why it is the longest duration here? See from here, 20 and 12. So longest duration is 20 so the critical path is a b and d are you getting my point a b and d is the longest duration hence do why because from if we go from here a b d that uh, duration is 20 if we go from here a c and d the duration is 12 so the 20 a b d is the longest duration so it is on the critical path here so this is the critical a b d now what is the free float of C activity? C this is the activity, this is the C activity. So the formula of uh, free float is early start of next activity minus early finish of activity, uh, current activity minus one. So early start of, ne if we talk about C, early start of next activity uh, is D. So what is the early start of next activity? This is 16 are you with me early start of next activity is 16 now here early finish of current activity early finish of current activity is 7 are you with me minus 1 
so 16 minus 7 minus 1 it will give you 8 so that means that we can delay the activity C for 8 days and it will not impact it will not delay the activity D are you with me are you getting my point what is what, uh, what actually free float tells you it is right now telling you 8 days activity C free float of activity C is 8 days and it tells you that activity C can be delayed for 8 days however it will not delayed the activity D so that is called the concept of free float here and the advantage of a free float calculation is that if you know the free float in the activity you must know that how much buffer how much delay you can uh, bear in an activity and it will not impact the next activity so this is very very important information as a project manager you must know and friend uh, as a uh, uh, you must know the concept of free float and also you must know the formula to calculate the free float so friends uh, that's all from my side I uh, ho hope you lo like this video if you like please share it with your friends and colleagues and thank you thanks a lot for your time and that's all from my side thank you